Let's talk about forklift inspection and maintenance. All forklifts must be inspected at least daily before being used. Forklifts used on a round the clock basis must be examined after each shift. You want to be sure to check the following. Check your fluid levels, oil, water, and the hydraulic fluid. Check for leaks, cracks, or other visible defects in the hydraulic hoses and mast chains. Check your tires, tire pressure for cuts and gouges. Check out the condition of the forks, including the top clip, the retaining pin. Check for stress cracks. Make sure all the safety decals and name plates are in place and are legible. Make sure all the safety devices are working properly, including the seat belt. Remember that a vehicle that is damaged, defective, or otherwise unsafe must be removed from service. Report the problem to your supervisor immediately. Whenever refueling a propane-powered forklift, remember that liquid propane is extremely cold when released to the atmosphere. If your skin is exposed to propane while refueling, you can get frostbite. You want to be sure to shut off the engine before refueling. Don't ever leave propane-powered forklifts near high heat sources. When parking propane-powered forklifts for a long period of time, turn the tank valve off. And any propane leak must be taken seriously. Propane vapor is heavier than air and will tend to sink to the lowest line area. If not adequately dissipated, it will ignite when exposed to a spark or flame. When dealing with charging or changing batteries on an electric forklift, make sure the battery changing charging area should have the following. Have no smoking signs posted. Make sure you have adequate fire protection in place. Be sure to have plenty of water for flushing and neutralizing spilled battery acid. An eye wash station that provides at least 15 minutes of flowing water. Be sure to have enough ventilation to remove hydrogen gas during battery charging. Talking about forklift attachments. Forklifts can have a variety of attachments which affect their performance and use. The load capacity of the forklift is reduced by the weight of the attachment. And remember that the attachment must be approved by the forklift manufacturer. Be sure you know how to use a specific attachment on the forklift. You will be operating or get training if you don't. Using a forklift, you'll be using or having to stack and load pallets. Loose loads are subject to falling. Off-center loads can also be subject to falling or cause a forklift to tip over. Looking at the photos below, show you the correct way to load pallets. Dealing with block, the most common. The upper level may be unstable if not encircled with wire strapping. When dealing with brick, containers are interlocked by turning each level 90 degrees. You can use a pinwheel pattern. This is used where brick pattern is unstable. When dealing with irregular stacking patterns, wood strips, plywood, or heavy cardboard between layers can help stabilize castings, bags, and other irregular shapes. When dealing with forklift work platforms, Never lift other workers on forks unless you use an approved work platform with railings as shown below. As the operator, you need to think about the situation and what you're trying to perform. You can end up having a very dangerous or serious accident, possible fatality. If you come across an order picker configuration for fall protection, this would be in a warehouse setting. The order picker forklift the vehicle must have either standing guardrails on all open sides or a safety harness and lanyard. Here's a situation why a safety harness is needed on an order picker forklift. While working in a warehouse using an order picking forklift, a worker tried to stand on a shelf to adjust the position of the load on the pallet. His foot slipped from the rack and he fell from the fourth tier to the floor. A safety harness could have stopped his fall. Forklifts have reduced visibility. Both the forklift mass and a large load on the forks reduce forward visibility. You can notice the difference between the older mass design versus the new. Your visibility is a little bit better. In warehouses or other indoor workplaces, aisles or materials, walls, doors, and other building configurations can create blind corners. Always be aware of your surroundings. Remember to travel in reverse or use a spotter to guide you. As you can tell from this picture, this is an example of a blind spot on a forklift. 
whether it be in a warehouse setting or in a construction site, you'll be dealing with pedestrians. Things to remember, you want to slow down and sound horn at intersections, corners, and wherever your vision is obstructed. When provided, use flashing warning light or backup alarms when traveling in reverse. You always want to look in the direction of travel. Signal to pedestrians to stand clear. Do not allow anyone to stand or walk under upraised forks. And when possible, make eye contact with pedestrians or other forklift operators before moving in their path. Here's an example of a forklift pedestrian accident. In this situation, the operator ran the forklift and the pedestrian walking near the operation, neither one of them are paying attention to each other. They're probably assuming one or the other was paying attention and the gentleman got hit. If you're operating a forklift and you're loading truck trailers and railroad cars, make sure that the truck trailer wheels are chalked. Make sure the dock board is secure and can handle the weight. And use a horn or warning lights when exiting trailer or rail car. You will come across all kinds of different load situations. In this one we're looking at wider or irregular size loads. You want to make sure you distribute the weight evenly when carrying irregular size loads. Keep the center of gravity of the load as near as possible to the center going horizontally across the forks. And keep the center of gravity of the load as near to the front wheels as possible. Whenever you're loading and unloading high storage racks, if you're removing a load from a high rack, slowly back out with the load, stop when it clears the rack, lower the load to the floor, and don't ever load the load while you're still moving. Some forklift do's and don'ts. Remember not to allow anybody else in the forklift except the operator unless the forklift has a seat for a rider with a seat belt. Always drive with the forks lowered and lower the forks to the floor when parking the forklift. Be aware of your surroundings. Watch overhead clearances especially when entering or exiting buildings or when you are raising a load on the forks. Here's an example of the risk to allowing a rider on a forklift. A seasoned forklift operator sit next to the operator seat while showing a new operator how to operate the forklift. The new operator accidentally performed the wrong maneuver, causing the forklift to run into one of the pillars of the site. The worker who had been training him was crushed between the support pillar and the forklift. Here's an example of why you want to stay out of the mast. While using a forklift to transport 15 cardboard boxes at once, some of the boxes started to slip. The operator climbed into the mast to adjust the falling boxes. When the worker stepped between the operator's seat and the mast without turning off the engine first, he accidentally hit one of the control levers, causing the mast to move. He was crushed between it and the overhead guard. Take a minute and look at this picture and ask yourself, what's wrong here? What could this gentleman have done differently? Here's another situation. Take a look at this picture and ask yourself, what could be done differently here? Are lives being put at risk? Was this necessary? Could this be prevented? Remember this, no speeding. Make sure you perform your job safely and under control. Don't ever leave your forklift unattended. A forklift is considered unattended when the operator is 25 feet or more away from the vehicle even if it remains in his view, or whenever the operator leaves a vehicle and is not in his view. When a forklift is left unattended, forks must be fully lowered, controls neutralized, power shut off, and the brakes set. Wheels must be blocked if the truck is parked on an incline. When the operator of a forklift is within 25 foot of the truck still in his view, the load engaging means must be fully lowered, controls neutralized, and the brakes set to prevent movement, but the power does not need to be shut off. When dealing with working inside, think about propane-powered forklifts and carbon monoxide. Propane-powered forklifts produce carbon monoxide. The amount depends on how well they are tuned, but should be 1% or less at the tailpipes. Carbon monoxide poisoning can occur when propane forklifts are used in cold rooms, controlled atmosphere rooms, truck trailers or shipping containers, or in warehouses or other enclosed areas that do not have enough fresh air ventilation. If propane-powered forklifts are used indoors, they should be tuned up regularly 
and test it for carbon monoxide emissions periodically. You should also have hands-on training on the specific truck you will be operating. Truck controls, forklift types, all the handling are different, as well as the controls. Be sure to familiarize yourself with them and get the training as required.